one of the fastest growing populations in the state was also the first to use the Willamette River to hunt and for commerce. And that's our backdrop for Comcast Newsmakers. Joining us is Nicole Maher, who is the executive director of NEA. NEA stands for? The Native American Youth and Family Center. And we serve the 38,000 Native Americans that live in this community today. And one of the fastest growing communities in Oregon. Absolutely, we are um, having record numbers of children and our population's very young and we are growing exponentially, which is wonderful considering that Portland's already the ninth largest native community in the U.S. Now, uh, I understand that uh, the graduation rates uh, have soared. Yes, yes. I mean. We, we do have quite a challenge. We have a very high dropout rate, but in the last five years, we've exponentially um, increased our numbers of graduates, and we're very proud of um, that work in this community. Hopefully those graduates will go on and change what the reality is, and that is that 10% of the Native American population, or excuse me, of the homeless population in Portland is homeless. Yeah, ten, so Native Americans represent a tiny percentage of the state population and only about 4% of Multnomah County's population and we're over 10% of all of the homeless community. So that's one of the really startling indicators that um, we still have many, many challenges to face in our community. And when we read about Native Americans, we read about the casinos and the mm -hmm. money, the, the millions coming in, that, that money is distributed equally, right? Well, there's many misperceptions and stereotypes about um, Native Americans in general. It's still widely believed that Native Americans get sort of free resources from the government. And as someone who lives and serves the community, um, that couldn't be farther from the truth. 50% uh, of Native families in Multnomah County live in deep, deep poverty. And while um, our community is very proud of the, the tribes of Oregon and their success at gaming, um, and we are pleased about those jobs that that creates, the majority of the people who live in Portland are actually from tribes all over the country and, um, you know, depend on this community and the social services in this community to be served. So would you say there's a large misconception about Native Americans? Absolutely, absolutely. It's still um, widely perceived that um, we get these free resources. Right. That's just absolutely not true. We live in the greatest poverty and um, most of the Native Americans who live in Portland actually belong to tribes from Alaska, the Southwest, and, and really the entire United States. There's 380 different tribes who live here. Well, there's so much uh, information to get out there. The foster care in this state yes. is, is ridden with Native American population, 30% of our foster children? Yeah, in Multnomah County, uh, close to 30% of all of the children in foster care are Native American. And again, we're only 4% of the population. So one of the things that's really embarrassing for this community is we have one of the highest overrepresentation rates. And so we have a long way to go and we need help from everyone in every corner to address this issue. This is not just a Native American issue. Um, you know, what I always say is if you care about children, if you care about children in foster care, you care about the Native American community. Um, and so really, you know, we're seeking support and help from anyone who really just genuinely cares about children. How does NAIA get the word out? Well, you know, we really try to build our reputation on the outcomes that we have with the young people that we serve. So we talked about the dropout rate. You know, only 34 out of every 100 Native Americans who start their freshman year in Multnomah County graduate high school. Well, with NAIA, 80 out of every 100 students who starts their freshman year finishes high school. And so so we try to really be known by our good works, by the outcomes that we've had, and then just trying to be as inclusive and inviting as possible. So anyone who would like to come and see our building, please give us a call. We'd love to take you on a tour. Well, you have a brand new building, I understand, but let's say you go to the building, what services would be offered sure, right there? Sure, sure. We pride ourselves on being a holistic um, set of services for the community, and we pride ourselves on being a little bit different and by really building community. So you could go there and get a food box. You could go there and participate in a cultural activity. You could go and hang out in our elder senior room and get to know some of our native elders and leaders. We have a school that is um, ninth through 12th grade. Okay. Thank you very much, Nicole Maher. We appreciate you joining us, getting the word out, and uh, hopefully some good things will come out of this. It's right. my pleasure. Thanks. Thanks for joining us on Comcast Newsmakers, everyone. I'm Ken Ackerman.